across the sea. One of the great things about doing your own show is you get to pick the bumper music. So every once in a while, you get a little Frank Sinatra. Yeah. You can't once go wrong with Frank Sinatra. Francis Albert. Ever. Yeah. In studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Good morning again, Rob. Maria Lawrence. Good morning. Our producer, the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin, as we continue our first day of interviewing those who are running for election in the city of Martinsburg. And this is uh, an incumbent that we will talk to next uh, who spent a good deal of his career uh, working for the city as well. Steve Knipe. Steve, good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah. Tell, tell us about uh, your first term as a council member and what's been eye-opening to you and what's kind of gone as expected. Well, my, uh, as you said, I was with the city of Martinsburg for 45 years. Uh, so I was kind of like on the other side of the fence. Sure. I was always going before the um, elected officials and such with different projects, different needs as they arose in my department. Uh I had a little apprehension going on the other side of the fence. You know, now, now it's now it's me trying to... Uh, You're the one find, saying no find, now. Yeah, <laughs> well, not really <laughs> saying no, but trying to find the funds and and uh, means and methods to achieve, which I know those department heads have, mm-hmm. because I was on that side. So I think I come with that perspective. Steve, what did you do for 45 years with the city? Well, I originally started at the wastewater plant and uh, worked my way up through operations at the wastewater plant. And then uh, took over the utilities department, which included both water and wastewater. Mm-hmm. Um, during that term, we built two major expansions at our wastewater plant and two major water uh, treatment facilities and numerous line projects, tank projects, booster stations and such. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, let's take us back four years, Steve, to your decision to finally run for office as opposed to working for the city. I see myself having I always kept myself busy. I was into the office every morning around 4.30 or 5 and uh, tried to put in a good long day. And I said, what am I going to do with this void in my life now that I'm retiring? And uh, so. Well, you do have grandchildren. I so. do have grandchildren <laughs> and I do still farm. But I said, you know, I just want to, you know, try to keep active and see projects that, that we've already started. But COVID kind of put a. Uh, slow on things and uh, see some projects and see them through. And why the decision to run for re-election? Is it to continue to see those projects through? That That is correct. Um, I've seen a lot of um, good happen in the city the last four years. I, I really see things um, moving, and I would like to continue with those projects. Tell me about the city in 2024 versus the city uh, 45 plus four years ago when you first started working for it. So just about 50 years ago. Right. Um, big difference. It was a big difference. Uh, in all departments, we were very, um, I would say, we were so small that we were doing a lot of multitasking, couldn't really specialize, um, more or less putting out fires, uh, just trying to keep things afloat. Now we are at a point, Martinsburg is at a point that they're, able to do projects and get ahead of big issues and such. Why do you think that is so? I think through uh, good management. Um, the previous city manager, Mark Baldwin, I think he was great for the city of Martinsburg. Him and I worked closely. Uh, you got Mark Spickler on the financial side and all the department heads. I mean, we, we just got a great, great group of people that um, see the projects through, whatever it takes. And I think they all have... Uh, a lot of love for the city, like um, like all of us do. Tell me about the current dynamic with this city council. Obviously, Corey Roman's not coming back. Kevin Knowles would like to continue on as mayor. Uh, you were elected in when uh, Harriet Johnson was voted in as uh, as the first female mayor of the city. Her unfortunate passing. She was much beloved. Uh, and, and now, four years later, here you are. What's the relationship been like in the productivity among this council and mayor? I think really great. Uh, I'm, to Corey's... Um, I really hate to see him leave, but I think he is uh, he, he's a great asset to this community. I hope he stays local and uh, and keep up the good work. You know, if not in the city, uh, you know, with other maybe other political aspirations and such, or just on the um, any anything he can do, I, I, I feel would be a help to us. Uh, Corey is great. He's a young, dynamic young fellow. That's uh, He's got the heart of Martinsburg in him as well. 
Maria. So why do you feel like there's um, things that you've left unfinished, Steve? Is that why, um, why you're seeking another term? Or what's the rationale when you're an incumbent, you've seen some things come to fruition, um, but are there some things that have been left undone? There, there is still some things. One in particular, and we all know you say going back 50 years, um, look at the interwoven project. That It's exciting. It is exciting. Just to see the, uh, that building transforming back into something. I mean, it is, it is getting beautiful. And uh, just to see that part of town really pick up and such. Um, and there's other projects like the underpass, the, the Queen Street. There's just numerous projects. I'd just like to see complete that we, when I was in the department, had to go ahead and move utilities out of the way and such uh, for these projects. And so uh, knowing they were coming down the pike. So I'd just like to see the, the completion of them. Steve, uh, I do, have not worked with you while you're a city councilman, but I did work with you closely when you were the water sewer district for the city. Uh, back in the early 2000s was a very critical, very dynamic period for the county. We we're trying to consolidate four independent water districts into one, and there's a lot of uncertainty. Through that whole process, I cannot think of a better partner to have partner being in the sense of cooperation not actually organizationally as what you and the city were you were able to help us when we needed help you're able to uh, uh, work with us so that we developed what I consider to be a very very productive a very unified uh, water water sewer district both the county and the city so I I want to publicly thank you for the role that you played in those days well, thank you Bill yeah. and it was a pleasure working with you yeah. I mean I uh, we, we drew upon each other's uh, uh, experience and knowledge and such. And, uh, you know, we're all in this business together. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people don't, we don't like a lot of growth in and around our area, but it's inevitable. We are going to have growth, mm -hmm. and we got to be prepared for it. And water and sewer is one of the main issues. you got to have, you know, good infrastructure. And um, I think our cooperation then and in the future is going to be critical. It was. As I've heard me say several times uh, during the drought of 2001, 2002, we're within one day of running out of water in Inwood. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to you and other folks, Greg Rowe, uh, we've rectified that. We don't have that threat in front of us anymore. That's great. Yeah. Uh, uh, Maria asked uh, a couple of uh, minutes ago about the challenges. Uh, sitting back after the last four years, what a what do you take your greatest pride in as a city councilman? I think uh, being able to get, I don't want to say day-to-day -day or monthly meeting challenges that we weren't expecting and being able to help to address those issues. I mean, there's always the big projects, but you also have the day-to-day -day things that come up that a council has got to look into and such. And I... And I Sometimes it's frustrating, but other times, you know, it's 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 uh, it's very interesting. Um, I was department head with the city, but I wasn't that involved with you know the police or the fire or other departments that much. But this way, I see which they were doing every every day as I was, even though we had department head meetings. But on this side, you actually see, and I, I think that's a that that was a challenge, but it's a it's a um, gratifying challenge. Yeah, the challenge it can take many forms, and you can never really anticipate what the challenge will be. But there's some basic parts of being prepared for these myriad of challenges. How do you prepare yourself for for the events of the future, the events of tomorrow? It's a tough question. It is. <laughs> yeah, but there's. I think I, I, with your experience, Steve, I suspect you've you faced this sort of question over the years. I have. I've, yeah. I'm, I mean, just looking back on the wastewater business, what it was 50 years ago versus today, and on the water side, there's continual new regulations, new requirements. You know, beyond the quantity challenges, there's a lot of different quality issues, and as more and more pollutants are identified and, and such. And so in that, in that aspect, you kind of develop 
knowing something's going to be coming, it, it isn't always clear sailing. Yeah. And there have been people, and there have been times um, in recent history when, um, you know, several areas of the city have non-potable water that you can't drink and they have to boil are you confident in the um in the water situation now that it's safe to drink and um and people can be assured when they live in the city that that this is a um, an item that's that's okay for them and their families to partake. Uh, yes, I mean um, back to the boil water challenges. That's that's a, a mandate. If you have like a a drop in your water pressure, whether it's due to a water main break or somebody hits a fire hydrant, then the water system has to post a boil water notice for the affected neighborhood, just to be on the safe side, because. You could have some intrusion of, of some type of contaminant into the water's source. So that's just to protect the customer. Why, why does that happen with the water pressure drop? Uh, it could be a main break. In other words, a water main could break. And yeah, storm, yeah, but when, it, when that breaks, why does that, why does that uh, make it dangerous for uh, pollutants to enter the water system? If you have, the, let's picture a main break, and this is kind of hilly terrain around Martinsburg. If it's in a lower lying area. It could lower the pressure on the higher elevations to such a level that you could actually have a backdraw into the system. So that's it's just a stationary precaution that, yeah. that they impose. Like, but as for the water system in in Hull, uh, Martinsburg's really blessed with the sources of supply we have. Uh, we have Kilmer Springs, and um, it's been a source for I think since the 1870s, and then Big Springs south of Martinsburg. Yeah. Um, both are very clean sources. As you recall, just four or five years ago, no, back further than that, actually, but eight years ago, we detected what is called PFAS, and it's the big national word nowadays, mm -hmm. in PFAS, PFOA, uh, in our big spring source. So the city of Martinsburg had to take that source, in other words, we had to take one part of our system, half our system offline, and, and I'm glad we had the redundancy. We decided to have the redundancy for the system back in when we built these plants in 2000. So we were able to rely on the Kilmer plant while we upgraded the Big Springs facility to remove the PFAS and PFOA. And there's going to be new regulations regarding that. And I understand Martinsburg is prepared for that because of some of the work that you did. That is correct. We did. Uh, we put in a system that's called a, um, an activated carbon system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, going forward infrastructure wise with the city of martinsburg are there major projects that need to take place is, is, are there major money challenges to meet those projects there is um as you can see what's going on with the monument or the interwoven project with it, uh, king street being offline that is a major storm sewer project and some water and sewer line work being done in there as, as well to convey that storm water from that site uh, Talking to the new water director, utilities director, he has a plethora of uh, projects that I had. I developed a, a like a ten-year plan of uh, projects, and he has weaned through them and said, "Well, yeah, we can do this, this, and that." So, yes, he will be coming to the council uh, for that department and requesting fu funding or trying to get sources of funding for those various projects. A lot of Martinsburg's infrastructure was put in. Um, Probably in the era of the 50s and 60s. That's my question. You're talking about uh, distribution lines now. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. And that kind of feeds back to the question you asked a while ago, uh, Rob, about the, the pressure. Uh, I don't know. I cannot speak for the city, but at one time the county was losing something like 30 to 40 percent of the water through leaks for these old distribution lines. Uh, tremendously large number, but if you think about it, these old lines, they, they do tend to leak. And um, uh, so when there's a lot of these leaks, if you don't keep the pressure up, there's going to be an infusion of pollutants going into the water system. So I know the county has spent a lot of time trying to replace the distribution lines, and I think you have as well. That is correct. Yeah. And it'll be an ongoing, I mean, yeah. it's just like plumbing in your house. Yeah. You know, you're always going to have issue, whether yeah. it be water or but, sewer. But it's a sizable amount at one time with these old lines that actually leak out of the out of the water system. And the city budget is about fifty million dollars. Yes. And, and about what percentage of that gets set aside for some infrastructure improvements? Right now, uh, in the water and sewer, 
Um, their budget is about, I believe, ten million. And is some and, of that ma matching some, funds? Yes, and then they'll they'll put so much percent of that into projects. They can, you know, they'll they'll assign certain projects for an upcoming year and such. If you if you uh, set so much money aside for an infrastructure project, does the state or the feds do they match th those funds? Here? Um, we can go after um, some other monies, whether it be state or federal, uh, and that's what we've done in the past. Or sometimes we've had the money to be able to do like a certain block or so and just do it in house without getting uh, federal or state matching funds. Does the city have enough water? Yes. Yes, How much more could the city grow? Oh, wow. Well, if you got 160, 190 units coming in pretty soon, can you take another development of that size? Yes, we should be able to. Yep. In, in fact, the city sells quite a bit of the water to the county. Which needed it last year. Well, they needed it last year, but they do, they've do. they been doing this last for the last 20, 25 Obviously. years. So yeah. I'm trying to give me their exact number, but I'm thinking about 1,000 gallons a day. Is that... Oh, it's it's more than more than that. It's, it's way, been way more dated. Than that. Yeah, yes, okay, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Steve, move. if you had to identify, say, two, three top priorities in um, in your uh, in your role as a councilman, what would those be um, moving forward? I would like to see um, uh, streetscape projects. In other words, take a neighborhood, uh, it's, uh, the streets are bad, the sidewalks are bad, curbing's bad, and go in and do do the utilities down that block. So you just pick a block and do the new utilities, water and sewer, and uh, curb and gutters and sidewalks and such. And uh, just start doing that, like, like the city has done for years with paving. You know, they, they prioritize so much money every year for paving and try to do not just paving, not just asphalt on the street, but the whole block or two blocks or what have you. Now the cityscape can also be viewed as beautification scape as well. And the and George Karras received some criticism and I think the city council at the time may receive criticism about these welcome to Martinsburg signs. Mm -hmm. Every time I see one of those signs, I take pride in in the city of Martinsburg. It gives it a totally different perspective uh, to me as someone that drives in the city all the time and I'm sure strangers as well I think that was money exceptionally well spent just the image it has for the uh, it's bestowed upon the city I agree with you yeah. yes it does I, I never understood that. that criticism I mean would you rather have a sign that said city of Martinsburg stay out I mean <laughs> no well I think they yeah. it was money spent that's and, what and, it was and again I think and the, they were nicely done they were well, nicely done and people I guess argue that you could have just a very small a very modest Sign, they would do the same thing. I don't think you can. Well, I think the signs they put were well done, serving the purpose exceptionally and, well. And you can you can buy a go kart and get around town, or you can buy a car that has air conditioning. You know, <laughs> right. if, yeah. are we after yeah. the minimum yeah. possible standard or what? Yeah. Uh, Stephen, vision Martinsburg ten years from now for me, and tell me what you see. Well, I see the progress continuing. I see uh, hopefully some of these streetscape projects. Uh, more beautification, more buildings downtown being fixed up, and out in the suburb areas, people taking more pride. I think as you do stuff like that, people take pride in their properties, and they'll start cleaning up properties more and painting and 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 such. And I think you just got to start start the ball rolling and and keep it going. And how do you determine, Steve? Because I know one of these projects was on the north side, like North Georgia, North. Um, a couple so years ago, um, and maybe that wasn't a streetscape per se, but everything was repaved, the sidewalks were redone, um, people complained because, you know, it was like driving on, um, you know, in Iraq for a couple of months, but, <laughs> um, but then it got better. Is that, do you prioritize those? How does that get done? Yeah, uh, what drove that project was uh, um, stormwater issues. Ah. There was a deep gutter and cars were going off and into the gutter, <laughs> goes way they parked and damaged vehicles and such. So, um, yes, I mean, uh, we should do it like, like I say, like we do with the paving. Uh, Count, board council members identify their neighborhood with streets are bad and such, and then um, and have a, a 
everybody, you know, look at it and say, okay, who is the worst? You know, let the public works department and engineering departments look at it and say, you know, yeah, this is definitely an issue. We need to address this one and just start chewing on them. You know, just sitting back looking at it, it's not going to accomplish it. You're going to have to start, you know, eating those projects. What, uh, uh, as a councilman, do you see happening that you would like to stop from happening in the city of Martinsburg going forward, Steve? If anything. I really don't see anything right now. I mean, I think all the departments are, are operating well. Um, I really don't have any. No, I don't. No, I think just keep keep things going the way they are. Very good. So we've got a couple minutes left. Is there a final question for yeah, Steve before and, he gets to the last minute? Yeah, and I'm and I. This is kind of a dangerous question to ask, but I'm <laughs> going to jump in anyway. Uh, you, as a city councilman, are as a county council the same way. Are paid for a part time job. Yes. Uh, Knowing you, I suspect you take this as more serious than just a part-time occasional job, do you not? Well, sure. Okay. Well, sure Bill. Would I you mean, embellish that? Would you build up on that? Um, I mean, not just with the constituent, yeah. but with, with the city itself in general, because the past I have, uh, you know, to call me what's in the street there, what's there, <laughs> you know, what would you do? And, and so, no, I mean, I'm, I'm still heavily involved that way. And I'll offer assistance in any way I can to help. Because I'm I'm in this community. I've lived here all yeah. my life. I learned five years in Jefferson County. I've, uh, I've, um, Nobody will hold that against you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, about a minute and a half left, Steve, in regards to parking. Mm -hmm. Parking garage or no parking garage? I'd love to see a parking garage. Uh, but uh, there again, it's, it's going to have to be really looked at where to place it, where's the best place to place it to get as much benefit, and um, coming up with the funding for it. Uh, parking is a challenge in Martinsburg, I, I will say that. And as we grow and and more of these buildings get fixed up and developing apartments above and such, it'll be more of a challenge. So, yes, we will have to address parking, and so that's going to be one of our big issues. Final word is yours. What do you have to say to the voters? Um, I'm going to say what my grandson says. He sees the signs out there, and I says. He's only four years old, and he says, it says, vote for Pops. <laughs> <laughs> vote for Pops. <laughs> vote for Pops. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for coming in. <clears throat> thank you, guys.